right. I hope each one of you has a copy of the scriptures that I plan to be referencing this morning. And as I mentioned to you, we'll be speaking on the subject of when we all get to heaven. Amen. A place we all groan and uh, look forward to, isn't it? All right. Now what happened? What happened? Why we want to go to heaven is we'll read. According to the scriptures, the first scriptures I'm going to be referencing today is uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. After that Adam and Eve disobeyed God and boldly partook of the forbidden that God had commanded, don't do it. Our text takes place. And unto Adam, God said, because I has hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. This next word is a key word. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of the ground. All the days of thy life in sorrow. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dost thy art and unto dust shalt thy return. Now that was passed upon all men. Then we read about a new day. In Revelation 21. John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. Now the word sea means division, period. Division wasn't here anymore. Everything will be unified after this takes place. No more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle or the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the A to the Z. And I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I'll give him, the thirsty one can get water freely, the water of life. But at this time we turn our hearts and minds away from the things of this life because we're strangers here. We're pilgrims. This is not permanent. Uh, under heavenly things. This earth is cursed and we need to not ever forget it because it's cursed. 
we see a heartache, we hear of, of the shooting that took place yesterday out here in West Texas for no reason. We hear of it on a weekly basis, them going into schools or somewhere and having a shootout in the malls now or wherever, and it's, it's going to wax worse, according to what I read in the scripture. But let's not forget we're still under the curse that was passed upon us through our father and mother, Adam and Eve. But there is a place we call heaven. Yesterday, as we were at a reunion, I got to looking at the photos of the past of people that I've known in the years gone by that's been gone, some of them a long time. And the lady I was talking to that was sharing these pictures with me had her kids and grandkids there. She had a bunch of them too. <laughs> but she showed me a picture of her grandmother who I knew well. She was an organist for the White Rock Missionary Baptist Church up the way for years. Showed me her picture and her little dollhouse sitting over there now. She passed away, what, four or five years ago, was it not? And we got to looking at all this, the people that lived in, on this old earth in the past and we realize that every year when we have a meeting, the number gets smaller because those that go on to, to an, uh, another destination. We only hope that that destination is, as we sang about a moment ago, what we call heaven, when we all get there. Now, the question I want to entertain first as we consider this, are all of us going to get to heaven? Well, I sure hope so. I hope you don't leave this place this morning without making preparations to go. Only the sinners who've trusted Christ as their Savior will be there. And let me qualify something here. There's going to be folk that'll be in heaven that never trusted Christ. Now, Brother Cobb, wait a minute. At least I got your attention. There won't be any little babies that won't be in heaven because they were not responsible for their sin. And there's going to be a group that fall under the category of special needs people who have the mind of a child. Their sins are covered. A key verse that you ought to remember when you talk about the age of accountability, and I've had people ask me, and when I was a kid I asked, what was the age of accountability? There's no certain age, is there? The Apostle Paul said, and y'all remember this verse, in Romans chapter 7, verse 9, I was alive without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And he continued that conversation on about what it was like to be in uh, under that sentence. And let me, let me say it to you again so you, you'll not forget that verse. Romans 7 verse 9. I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. What meant separated. He was separated from God. And only there to till the time that he was on the road to Damascus to persecute the Christians, that the Lord changed his course. When he struck him down and said, Paul, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why did thou persecute me? And in essence, <clears throat> Paul said, what you want, Lord? <laughs> what you want me to do? 
So only the person that's trusted Christ, along with children, babies, people under the age of accountability, will be there. Because, folk, you and I have no excuse. The Lord has said we could take of the water of life freely if we'd come. That's up to us, isn't it? But what do we mean by getting to heaven? Brother Tommy, when he prays it quite often, I've observed that he thanks the Lord for a wonderful day in paradise. Well, brother, uh, the paradise where the Lord was was a little higher than where we are right here. And that's not to criticize what you said. But paradise means to be with God. And that's why the Lord told the, the thief that asked for forgiveness. He said, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord said to that thief, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And folk, it's got to be paradise if you're in the presence of him or with him. The word heaven means above. When we talk about heaven, literally we mean going to be with the heavenly one, the one that dwells above. A place with a heavenly nature. If you would, look at the last verse on your page, paper there, Hebrews 11, verse 16. But now they, and let, let me uh, change that to first person, we, Desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. That's what God says about our father Abraham. It says he wasn't content to dwell on the, the, this earth, but he looked for a city whose builder and ruler is God. And folks, we look for that, we yearn for that city, do we not? We get tired of this heartache and uh, weeping and pain and whatever that we go through. But even our bodies, the scripture says, will be changed. Why Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, at the sound of the last trump, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, right, brother? <laughs> brother, brother Enrique referenced that this morning in Sunday school. But we're going to be given a new body. One that won't have to endure the pain that we have in this current body. But when we say heaven, does that mean we're going to be dwelling way up in the yonder blue? I don't think so. We read a moment ago where it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth are passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. My Bible tells me that we're going to, Jesus is going to rule and reign from the throne of David. He's going to set up his kingdom on this earth He's going to be the judge, the king. And he's going to rule and reign for how long? 1,000 years on this earth.
The Lord is preparing a city. That's why he said, I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may be also. And folk, when we get to heaven, we're going to leave behind the old carnal mind, the evil mind. And that's why the scripture says that we groan and struggle within ourselves. Paul said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He didn't say, well, I'm a pretty good guy. He said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? We'll have our bodies changed. Some other things that we'll recognize about heaven, important things. Satan will not be present. Can't come. <laughs> Where's he going to be at during a thousand years? In the pit, isn't he? And the Lord's going to let him out for a little while after the thousand years is over to gather up his finally those that still reject Christ. And I don't know how anybody can reject Christ during that period, but apparently they do, according to the scriptures we read. All wars will cease. And we'll dwell in and around New Jerusalem. The key thing is who's going to be sitting on that throne in Jerusalem? Our Lord and our Savior. Tomorrow, Linda and I plan to go back to a get-together at the cemetery where they get together each year and they supposedly, mostly they visit, but they have a gospel singing on Saturday night and they're already up there uh, with campers and so forth. Uh, but to go each year to that cemetery to make sure it's clean and uh, in honor of their loved ones that's gone. The family circle is going to be complete. The family of God. There won't be an absent child of God there. They'll all be there. We'll see the family of God whose number is as the sand of the sea. That's what the scripture tells me. And we'll get to see the riches, the streets of gold, the pearly gates. Folk, I believe all of it. I just wished I could have a video and open it up and say, folks, peek, look. <laughs> we can look by faith as we read his word. It's all a place that he's prepared for us. Not that we deserve it. If you ever heard anybody say, I don't deserve it, go to heaven. Well, that's true with all of us. None of us going because we deserve it. More than anything else, when we get to heaven, we'll do as we just sang. We'll see Jesus, the rock of ages, the cornerstone, the I am, the light, the life, the hope. And as Paul said, in him we live and move and have our being. We'll see our Savior. The one that made us and then came and died for us. Our minds cannot comprehend the glory that shall be revealed. And as the scripture put it, I have not seen, ear hath not heard. The glory that's going to be revealed. 
Doesn't change it. The communists accuse us of promising people pie in the sky in the by and by. Folks, the Lord's good for his word. He made the promise. Amen. But it's better than pie, isn't it? <laughs> but what does the communists have to look forward to? Nothing. Because it excludes God. Heaven and earth must pass away. I'll share this with y'all right quick, it, and I'll be quick at it. The lady I was talking to yesterday was talking about her relative. And uh, a relative of mine, distant relative, but she was, wasn't, I wasn't as close kin. As, this was this lady's great aunt, actually. And she says to me, that uh, Catherine's down there somewhere in a nursing home facility in the Houston area around Montgomery County. Uh, Montgomery or Conroe, somewhere in that area. And I looked her and her straight in the face. I said, you hadn't heard? I said, Catherine died last year. And it just blew her away because this was her aim. She says, how do you know that? And I said, I talked to another lady, Sandy. And she told us some months ago that when she found out that Catherine had died, she had been dead then for over a month. And get this, what I'm trying to say to you, to use this as an illustration. But her granddaughter, who's in charge of her affairs, didn't call anyone. She had her cremated, and that's it. No burial, no funeral, no nothing. And I said, you ever heard about greed? I said, why wouldn't she notify us? Because apparently this lady had something that she wanted herself, and she didn't want to share it with the rest of the family. Can you believe that? You know how much of that stuff, and I'm going to use that word stuff, you know how much stuff we're going to carry with us when we leave here? They don't allow it, do they? Absolutely not. Nothing. Had a, years ago when I first started preaching, I had a lady's uh, husband's funeral. And she put a big old knife in the casket, and I'm not kidding you, I'm not, not at all. She put a knife in the casket, and I said, I'll never forget this. I said, Ms. Williams, what are you putting a knife in here for? Well, he's going to the happy hunting ground. I'm serious as a heart attack, what the lady told me. Well, I didn't have an answer for that. But I can tell you this much. You put a knife or you can put a gun or whatever, it's just going to go with a, uh, unless somebody digs it up, it's going to wither away, isn't it? That's where everything else is on this earth. Can't take it with you. Don't try to travel with such a heavy load, folks, because you got to put it off anyway. I thought it was kind of absurd, though, the granddaughter not letting anybody know about her grandmother dying. But everybody was concerned trying to find out. She didn't want to share what, whatever she had to leave behind. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's our lesson for today and a message for today. And folks, if you hadn't thought about it, just sit and muse on the fact of what the Lord's got in store for us. Because his word tells us enough that we all ought to want to go. And he tells us whoever will can go. All right, we're going to stand together and we'll be dismissed at this time. It's okay, brother.